but that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. Shine your light and let the whole world see. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Let the whole world see We're singing For the glory of the risen King Jesus, shine your light And let the whole world see We're singing For the glory of the risen King My Savior, you can move the mountains you are mighty to save, you are mighty to save, forever, author of salvation. You rose and conquered the grave, oh, you conquered the grave, oh, my Savior, you can move the mountains. You are mighty to save. You are mighty to save forever, author of salvation. You rose and conquered the grave, oh, you conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Good morning. Crowd of you out there this morning. I have a few announcements that I am excited to share with you. First off, go ahead and have a seat. Probably make this a little more comfortable for you. Secondly, if you're a guest with us this morning, I'd like you to take a look at the back of the seat in front of you. Inside, there's a, a, a little card there that says uh, "connection card" on it, and we would like to do just with just that with you through that card and, and connect with you. If you could go ahead and fill out your information there, turn it into the, uh, the welcome table that is right outside the, uh, the main doors here. Um, we have a sweet treat that we'd like to get in your hands, and if you have kids, we'll probably give you a second one or something like that. So please do hit that. Let us uh, have the opportunity to uh, officially welcome you here this morning and, uh, and make you uh, feel a part of our service. Um, there's a few lines on that card as well. Through that, you can also share prayer requests or any feedback that you might have for us. I know Pastor Joel and I both take a, take a look at those cards every week and, and pray through those and um, figure out what we can do with those. A few other announcements I have for you. Um, 
Also in the back of the seat in front of you, uh, you can find Awana envelopes. Uh, and that is to sponsor uh, a, a child in our Awana program. We have had 34 kids show up again this week. Uh, we are excited about that. Let's go ahead and praise God for those 34 kids. We're hoping to continually grow that program and have uh, the, the resources necessary to, to support that. So um, what that envelope is for is for each student that we have that, that comes and, and is a part of that program, um, we have a, uh, a, usually a vest or a uniform of some kind and a workbook um, and, and just making sure that the program runs smoothly. It costs us about $25, $27 uh, per, uh, per child. So if you want to sponsor a, a child, that is what that envelope is for. You can go ahead and put that in the, uh, in the offering plate as it comes by a little later. Or you can uh, also turn that into the welcome table and we'll make sure that gets to the right spot. Um, also wanted to uh, point out that our life groups are still uh, in their sign-up period. If, uh, if you did not get a, a form for that, those were uh, handed out on the way in. Uh, and there are, I believe, four groups still left that you could uh, be a part of and join. And uh, they are just a great time to not only study about God's Word and uh, learn more about this world that He's created uh, through our relationships, but we also get to build those relationships. It's kind of hard to connect with you know, everyone who's here on a Sunday morning. These, uh, these life groups are a small group format. Uh, some, several of them meet in people's houses. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to get to know people. And I would encourage you, if you're, if you're craving that kind of connection, to, to look at a life group and see which one you can sign up for. Um, and that, those run from um, October, that's the word I was looking for, uh, <laughs> through January. And uh, don't feel like, you know, you have to commit to that whole time. It's good if you can, but um, as we say in the life groups, we'd rather have you there for some of it than none of it. So uh, look through those, see which one piques your interest, and uh, make sure you sign up for those. Go ahead and list your top three uh, choices on there so that we can make sure that we can get you into one that you'd prefer. Um, so another thing that I wanted to bring up is uh, we're getting to the point where our annual meeting is coming up in November, and as part of that, we are nominating new officers uh, for that. If you're curious about what positions are available, um, there is a list of the current officers and the years that our people are coming off uh, in on the bulletin board right next to our restrooms, uh, just down the hallway there, and uh, you can see those. If you have any uh, uh, any ideas of people you think should be filling those positions, go ahead and pass those along to our nominating committee. They're uh, contact info or names are listed in the bulletin there for you to, to follow up with. Or if you want to, you can just send it into the church office through our, our web page, uh, cbcnorwich.com. You can uh, select the Contact Us page and, and fill out uh, that uh, information that way. And the last thing that I wanted to uh, really more tell you about... Um, our new secretary, Ray Jacklin, is going to be starting this week, so we are excited to be moving forward uh, with that, uh, that change. So make sure that you contact and flood the office with uh, thanks and admiration for her and uh, uh, make her feel welcome that way. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, I would invite you to go ahead and stand back up again. One of the things that we are uh, working at and excited about here at Calvary is making sure that everyone has a place to belong. So I want you to go ahead and shake the hands of the people around you, give them a warm smile, and let them know that you're glad that they're here this morning.
woods was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet, now at his feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame, now robed in majesty, the sapiens of perfect love, now shines for all to Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. that held us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me your name your name is Victory, all praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our God has dropped the grave our God has dropped the grave your name All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to 
Christ our King. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. Declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. I love that song. Uh, the first time I heard it was actually last year at TLC, and that that bridge, it just, res I don't know, it just spoke to me so much how Jesus Christ, the resurrected King, is the one who resurrects me. And in Sunday school, uh, we have a special guest today, Mike Miosi, and he spoke of the glorious exchange of how Jesus takes our sin and he paid for it with his life. And so in return, we lay our lives down for him. And sometimes that can be hard and confusing. And, uh, and in times like that, I'm reminded of what Psalm 25 says. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Good and upright is the Lord, and therefore he instructs the sinners in his way. When we uh, give ourselves to Jesus, he can use us mightily. And that's what this next song is uh, about.
Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours. You are mine. God is great, isn't he? And all 
the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your greatness and for resurrecting us, for being with us, for sending your spirit and your son to be with us. God, I pray for the rest of this service that uh, you would be with Mike as he uh, shares with us today, that you would give him wisdom and clarity. And I pray that you would prepare our hearts to hear what he has to say and that we would continue to worship you as we go forward. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. incredible how God works through songs and worship. I, we were singing that one song, um, going beyond our borders and spreading the word, and that's what our speaker this morning is trying to do, um, through a different way of just teaching people, but teaching people to teach people, and that's what discipleship is all about. So Mike is going to come and share this morning with us. Um, this is Mike Maiosi with Spread of Grace Ministries. Well, good morning, y'all. Uh, if you're a visitor here today, you got the guest speaker. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, Pastor Joel is uh, you're, the one you're looking to hear. But uh, at any rate, we're looking to hear the Word of God, and that's, uh, that's what I hope to offer today. Um, have you ever had one of those times in life when you sensed God calling you into something more. You might not even be sure how God is moving, uh, but you just know that there's something missing. About two and a half years ago, my wife and I, by the way, my wife is down here, she can wave. That is not our baby that she's holding. We're done with that phase of life. Um, my, couple, my daughters are here with me. Uh, our son is at home. But uh, I always like to tell people, you know, we have, we have uh, two great kids and another kid, you know. I'll let you guess that one. But anyway, about two and a half years ago, my wife and I um, were meeting in this little cafe in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. It reminds me a lot of what we passed on the way to, to here today, um, but we had just experienced about a five-year period of extended suffering in our lives, in our family. My wife's sister had died of ovarian cancer. Uh, we had had a miscarriage. My father died. <laughs> our son, at 15 years old, was diagnosed with stage three uh, cancer that had came as a tumor in his spinal column. Uh, on our on our twentieth wedding anniversary, we we were on a cruise, you know, in the Caribbean, 
finally trying to catch a break after all this suffering. And the very first port, my poor wife got in an accident and fractured her tibia. She shredded her meniscus, tore her ACL, the whole thing. All I can tell you is that I'm glad going on a Segway was her idea and not mine, okay? <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, it, it wasn't all bad. My wife got to at least ride in one of those hover rounds in, in Walmart, you know? That was pretty cool. Um, but there we sat in that little cafe trying to make sense of what in the world God had been trying to do in our lives. And, and that's when my wife asked me this question. So how are you doing? <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, I tried to shove it off a little bit. Fine, you know, no, how are you really doing? Um, and I, I said to her, well, you know, right now I'm pastoring the church that Jesus has called me to, and so I'm sticking to that call. I'm sticking to what I know, but if I'm totally honest, I sense there's something missing. Like there's something else God wants us to do. So Christina asked, well, if you could do anything, what would you do? And I said, without hesitation, I would go train pastors. <laughs> That's what I would do. Earlier that year, I had gone to teach pastors in Uganda. You see that picture up there. And, uh, and I did it with this little organization called Spread of Grace Ministries, which is committed to training pastors in the most remote places of the world. Simply how to study, believe, and preach the Bible. And when I returned to the States, um, I could not get these guys out of my mind. They haunted me at night, you know. I, I, I couldn't often sleep at night because it was like the Holy Spirit was waking me up saying, hey, you need to pray right now for these guys. I remember a different group of pastors in, uh, further north than these guys in Uganda, and we, we had them share their testimonies, and without exception, every single one of them shared their testimony of coming to faith in Jesus Christ and how part of that was being delivered from alcoholism and how the word of God saved their souls in the process. Just like I knew Something was missing in my life in that moment of transaction with my wife. I knew that these guys that you see up here all had something missing as well. I knew deep down that my missing piece was to help them with their missing piece. I had gone to both Bible college and seminary. I heard the worship leader today talking about, you know, TLC, that's at Summit University, or Clark Summit University. I can't even remember the name because it was Baptist Bible College when I went there. But I had gone to Baptist Bible College, I had gone to seminary, I got my MDiv. All after that, all that, God gave me a real life education in church planting in North Carolina. I had spent time in professional counseling and Christian camp ministry. Anybody know Camp Susquehanna around here? Uh, yeah, you're the good people. Yeah. Anybody know Camp Ayuka? <laughs> you're all right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a great camp. But I, I, I was a camp director for a while, and, I, and, I, and I've been in pastoral ministry. Um, God entrusted it. All these things, all, all these experiences in ministry and education. I, I know how to study the Bible. I'm not flaunting anything. I'm just telling you, I, I, I know how to read it. I've been trained how to study it. And, and there I was facing these men who, had, who in no other way would they even have an opportunity to know how to study the Bible. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I have been given something like that, with that much weight to it? And these guys most likely will have no other way. In fact, many of them I shared this morning Many of them don't even have Bibles when we first come. I mean, could you imagine Pastor Joel coming up here today preaching to you and not even having a Bible to feed the flock of God? 
So I'm thinking, how can I have been given all this and just keep it to myself? How could I have what they need and just sit here? So God was using my wife like the little blonde-haired Holy Spirit in that cafe. And so for the next two and a half years, we waited on God. There are spiritual leaders, I want you to know, all over the world who are on the front lines of ministry fighting to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ and to build his church. These men and their families desperately need encouragement. They need wind for their sails. And most of all, they simply need equipped with the word of God. Because the one thing I've learned going around the world and doing this training is that the spirit of God uses the word of God to do the work of God for the glory of God. I have seen it over and over again. I hope to see it this morning. But I'm telling you that it is the same Bible that God uses on this end of the earth that he uses on the other end of the earth and watching people come to spiritual life by the power of the Holy Spirit through the word of God is just indescribable. you know when we were singing here this morning I, I get I catch these visions every once in a while one day all of us you know with people all over the earth all saved by the same Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit and the word of God worshiping the living God and, and, and so for me to sit back and not offer something that I have to these men that I know that they need felt awfully selfish. Today we're gonna look at the life of a man who became one of the most dynamic preachers in the early church. And if you would turn to Acts chapter 18, I would appreciate it. This was a man that had incredible skill in preaching the Bible, but he still needed training. His story reminds me of spiritual leaders all over the world who still need equipped, still need encouraged, as much as they did in the first century church. And this man's name was Apollos. So if you look in Acts chapter 18, we're gonna be looking at uh, verses 18 uh, through Actually, let's start uh, in verse 23. Now, let me give you a little context. Verse 23 is a transition point in the book of Acts. Paul had already been on uh, two missionary journeys, and he's about to start his third. He had just met uh, Aquila and Priscilla uh, in uh, Corinth, and he left them at the church at Ephesus. And in verse 23, Paul, so that's where they are. Paul is now going to launch out into his third missionary journey. Verse 23 of Acts 18. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, so all that's going on with Paul. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos a native of Alexandria came to Ephesus. Oh, who was at Ephesus? Paul left Aquila and Priscilla there. So he comes to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more accurately or adequately. Apollos was a Jew with a Greek name from North Africa. Talk about multicultural in one guy, right? and, and Apollos grew up in this area of Alexandria, Egypt, and Alexandria was like a scholar's mecca. It was filled with schools as well as with the largest library of the ancient world. In fact, um, before Julius Caesar um, mostly destroyed that library, Alexandria's library stored uh, 700,000 Greek texts. So Apollos came from a multi-ethnic, highly educated background. And in verse 24, it tells us that he was a really smart guy. 
with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures, specifically the Old Testament he was familiar with. Verse 25 uh, says, says this, he had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. Apollos was not only smart, he was a dynamic, powerful teacher. He was a spiritual leader. However, he was missing a piece, a major piece to the puzzle. Here's the deal, it it doesn't matter how dynamic a person is. If we are missing pieces to the puzzle, this puzzle, it can be catastrophic. In fact, this morning as I prepared here, my prayer was simply, Lord, don't let me be dynamic. Let the word of God do its work today. I'm not interested in being dynamic. This is dynamic enough without us. Jesus said something so important. He said, it is the truth that will set you free. It is not our interpretation of the truth. It is the truth that will set us free. Adolf Hitler was dynamic, but he certainly didn't have anything remotely close to the truth that would set people free. I remember one time when I was preaching and I completely lulled a guy to sleep. (laughs) I might be doing it this morning. It was was, uh, Christmas Eve and I remember, I'm like, Christmas Eve? Yeah, Christmas Eve. And I mean, he was like, like so loud. Everybody could hear, and it was actually so funny. I just wanted to burst out in laughter. That tells you how dynamic I am. I mean, Apollos, though, is not putting people to sleep. Uh, he, he, you know, here's the issue, though. He was mingling inaccurate teaching. Now, I just, I also pray sometimes like this. Lord, when I meet Apollos in heaven, man, I hope he forgives me for, for this, right? Because I'm bringing out this one piece in his life. But the, it, it's, a, it's a good ending to this story. Apollos really uh, is somebody that I admire a great deal because of the humility in his life to be able to locate the missing piece and to change. I hope I'm like that. When I was in Uganda last year, I noticed a TV preacher who, yeah, they have TVs in certain places in Uganda, but I, I saw this huge sea of people. This is in, the, in a city church, and, and he was preaching, and he was so dynamic, and people were so captivated by his words. He was, he was um, uh, you know, unlike me, not putting anybody to sleep. People are hanging on his every word, just, just waiting for it. But here's the problem with what he was offering them. He was offering them something called the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel is basically this, that you come to Jesus and he'll give you everything that you ever dreamed of. So it's luring people in to come to Jesus for false reasons. It is not the gospel of the word of God. And from this man's lips were coming like a sewage sludge and people were eating it. Apollos knew all about Jesus as the Messiah and about repentance and about salvation, but he only knew, verse 25 tells us, about the baptism of John. Now you might sit there and say, you know, what's the big deal about that? He got the gospel right, didn't he? And I say to you, maybe, but I know he's missing a big piece, and that's where false doctrine begins. If God calls you to teach the word, you had better rightly divide the word of truth, because this is God's word we're talking about. And it's truth that sets people free. Not our interpretation, but the truth. Apollos had a number of things right, but he was missing a vital piece. Now, John the Baptist had a great, incredible ministry. His baptism was signified by repentance and preparation for the Messiah. But, But by Acts 18, where we're at today, the Messiah had already come. And now... Baptism is is all about our lives, those who come to faith in Jesus being immersed in to Jesus Christ. 
When a person is baptized into Jesus, it is like a sign for the world to see that the Messiah has already come and our lives are totally identified with him. Baptism does not save us. It shows the world that we are saved through Jesus Christ. So one day, Apollos was speaking boldly in a synagogue in Ephesus, and and there in that congregation were two key people, Priscilla and Aquila. They overheard him, and they, they noticed the missing piece. Now, if um, you ever have to correct a teacher, please take a lesson from this couple. Look at what it says in verse 26. They invited him into their home. They didn't make this public spectacle of Apollos, right? So if you think I'm preaching a bunch of baloney today, can I ask you for a favor? At least invite me over to lunch. I would appreciate that very much before you correct me. Notice what Priscilla and Aquila did not do. They did not say, it does not say, the scripture does not say, when they heard him, they, they found their friends and started complaining about Apollos <laughs> behind his back. Spreading rumors that he was one fry short of a happy meal, right? Priscilla and Aquila probably realized as the scriptures are really kind of showing Apollos to be a genuine guy. I mean, they, they probably saw that he was a genuine guy. They certainly saw that he was gifted by God. So, you know, they didn't want to humiliate him. Instead, they spoke to him in privacy and with precision. And in verse 26, it says that they explained to him the way of God more adequately. That is equipping the right way. And let me say, that's exactly what I have seen us do with SGM time and time again. When I was in Uganda this past May, the picture that you see up there, his name's David Otema. He was SGM's director in Uganda. And while I was in country, David actually passed away. He was a good friend of mine, and um, I at least praised the Lord that I had the opportunity to speak at my friend's funeral. I had the honor of doing that, and you know, David was just a master at equipping pastors. Time and again, I saw this guy go out of his way to absolutely make sure that they would understand. And many times, he was my translator. So often what would happen is I'd say, you know, like two words in English, and then he'd go off into like 50 sentences, you know, of of the Acholi language. And uh, like the time that I was introducing myself, uh, and, and I told the crowd that I was married to a woman named Christina, and she was the most beautiful woman in the world. And I don't know why it's funny, but they always laugh when I say that. So, so I say that, and, and, and David begins to translate for him, and he's going on, blah, 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 and I'm waiting, 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 and all of a sudden he goes, Christina, Miss America. <laughs> and they all laugh like you're laughing, and I'm going, they know who Miss America is, <laughs> you know? So David, David was just committed to this, to equipping people the right way. And just a few days before he died, the last time, in fact, that I saw him alive, David pulled me aside. He was, he was dying, literally, on his couch. And uh, he said, pass the mic. The driver, James, he's being called into ministry. Talk to him about it. You better believe that's exactly what I did. I've known um, so many men that this guy influenced by doing it the right way. And here's the powerful thing about what SGM does, about what David did, about what I'm doing. We, we say often, a guy named Stephen Alford wrote this. He said, ministry to ministers is ministry to the multitudes, We may have a group of 30 guys that are taking our training, but you think every one of them represents probably 100 people. That's 3,000 people like that. And in the same way, when Priscilla and Aquila pulled aside uh, uh, Apollos, 
you can just feel it in the scriptures. Oh, wait, man, if he responds to this, watch what's going to happen. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. If you look in verse 27, when Apollos then, after being explained the word of God more adequately, when he wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and, and, and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. And on arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed. For he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. Ministry to ministers is ministry to the multitudes. And right there it is. There's a, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's something called the Luzan Movement, the Luzan Movement, that Billy Graham actually started um, several years back. And as he would recollect on his life and ministry, he says that his most lasting legacy is the Luzan Movement, which is basically a big think tank of missions for the world. So they do all kinds of research and try to come up with solutions to, to um, help with the, the, the missional issues that are in the world. And Recently, they reported that 95% of pastors around the world do not have formal training. And I'm telling you that a lot of people that we're seeing don't even have Bibles. Last year when I was in Uganda, you see this picture up here with me training some, some of church leaders and pastors in ministry. They showed up to a conference that we were doing and they had heard about the training that SGM was up to and they sat with me under this big tree and they begged us, can you please bring the training? Can you please bring the training? And I said, well, you know, I, I, uh, it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of coordination. You need to pray. And so I said, tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, do a session just with you outside the, uh, the church building. That's their church building there. And uh, so we did. And I taught them, you know, from Acts 20 and, and all these things about what it means to, to, to watch over yourself and your doctrine. And as I was done, first question came up, so are you going to bring us to training or not? You know. And, and, and I said, uh, well, again, like it takes a lot of money, begin to pray. And what, here's the amazing thing that happened in that moment. A guy named Jimmy Taban, who's a pastor that we've been training for about six years, was, was there. He's just to my left up there, actually to my right from your perspective. The guy with the glasses on his head, that's Jimmy Taban. And Jimmy Taban has, he is, he, like, he does not stay quiet. <laughs> he knows how to, pre he's a preacher, you know what I'm saying? And, and I mean, if Jimmy gets going, forget it. You're gonna be sitting there a while. And, and Jimmy sat there that whole time totally silent, and he had been training for six years. And he had asked us, can I please come with you up to the northern region to these guys? And we, we said, yes, you can come. And he came and he sat there listening and listening. And when I left, he stayed the night. And he stayed with those pastors. And he said, look, if you really want this training, you need to begin to do it yourself. Begin to meet together. Begin to pray together. Begin to discuss the scriptures together. And there this guy is, the guy that... I, I've had the blessing to get to know and to pour into pouring out what he had learned already in the lives of these other men. Do they still need the training that SGM has to offer? Absolutely. But Jimmy started to put the pieces together. All this reminds me of Apollo, such a smart guy, gifted, and, and, and these guys are smart, they're gifted, they're called of God, they know that they're called of God, and, and, but they just don't know how to do it. And that's where we come in. And that's the calling and, and the passion that God has put on to my heart. And I wanna tell you, these guys are absolutely hungry. And when they get equipped like Apollos did, it, you know, and when they're encouraged like Apollos was in this recollection of Priscilla and, and Aquila doing this in his life, they, just like Apollos, suddenly become unleashed on the church. Apollos wanted it. He responded to his training 
with even more desire and with resilience. Even, you can see it in verse 20, 28, in the face of resistance. He refuted the Jews in public debate. I saw the same kind of hunger this, uh, this last year in Mexico when we were training a group. One of them, who's pictured here, his name's Ricardo. He had gotten fired from his job for coming to our training the previous year. And he came back. <laughs> Another group of pastors in that same conference, there they are, that's how they, that's how they got there. In the back of, it looks like a cattle truck. Some of them stood there for seven hours. Seven hours to come to the training. What does all this mean? It might mean different things for different people. I know for me, sitting in that cafe with my wife asking me, <laughs> how you doing? It meant that I had to respond to Jesus and what he was cultivating in, 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 in my heart. God might be challenging you today. Maybe he's challenging you to partner with SGM or a ministry like us. Maybe God is calling you today to be a prayer warrior I want to tell you something. I, I believe wholeheartedly that not everybody is a goer. They're senders too. There's people who send and there's people who go. I, I don't know which end of the spectrum that you're on. You may be sitting here today saying, I know that God is calling me to be a goer. But maybe you're sitting here going, you know, that time's over, but I, it is my time to be a sender. And I gotta tell you that I have been watching God do powerful things through this process. I mean, like Paul told you in the beginning, you know, yeah, we've kind of stepped out into this ocean. I mean, when I, when I responded to this call, it was, hey, Mike, come be the director of SGM, but hey, Mike, we can't pay you anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, how many of you would respond to a job going, hey, come work for us, we're not gonna pay anything? You know? Yeah, right, how about it? And, and, and so that was like the biggest red flag to my wife and I. I've, I've never had to like go out and beg people for support before, like every other missionary, right? And I'm going, I don't know how to do that, you know. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've done a lot of things in ministry, but I've never had to do that. So um, let me tell you, God is so powerfully sovereign. We respond to the call, and uh, we have been watching senders come out of the woodworks. I was on a plane to actually, as, as a pastor at that time, this is back in the end of March, I think, or beginning of March, on a plane to go to, um, where were we going? I always forget. Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. We're going down to Alabama, and I was going to officiate a wedding in Alabama. And, we, and of course, you know, the bride and groom, you know, they're, they're broke, right? <laughs> like bride and grooms are when they first get married. So we're getting like the cheapest flight, right? Which means to get from Pennsylvania to Alabama meant at least two connections, right? The first connection was from Harrisburg to Philadelphia. That's like 20 minutes, okay? 15 maybe, 20 minutes. I'm so thankful. He's like the best travel agent ever, that husband, okay? Because on that 20-minute flight, here's what happened. I didn't know what I was doing in terms of how, to, how do we put together support, right? <laughs> and I'm going, Lord, I don't know what to do. Help me. And so I found this audio book. I mean, forgive me, but I don't know what I'm doing, all right? I need help. So I get this audio book, and I get on this plane, and I'm thinking, I'm, I am not going to talk to a soul on this plane. I'm going to get on this plane. I'm going to put, put my headphones on, listen to this audio book, figure out how in the world I'm supposed to raise support, right? So I, I, I do that. I get on the plane, put them on. I'm not going to talk to anybody. God sits Christina in front of me and some other stranger lady next to me. Headphones on, and it was almost as if like God reached down and said, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how this is done. 
two employees from the airline suddenly walk back. We're all the way in the back of the plane. They walk back and they start talking to this lady, like over top me, right? So I, I of course, didn't want to be rude, so I take my headphones off and this, they're saying, ma'am, your ticket didn't scan right. We, we, we got a problem with you being on the plane, blah, blah, blah. And the lady's like, will you scan my ticket? What are you gonna do, throw me on the tarmac, you know? And so long story short, she, they get that figured out and we're just sitting there like, that was weird. And somehow we get into this conversation and the woman says, hey, my husband and I are going down to Mexico soon. And I said, oh, my wife and I are going to Mexico. And she said, well, what's, what are you going to Mexico for? And I said, well, my, my, uh, I work for this little organization called Spread of Grace Ministries and we train, pe- train pastors in remote places of the world. She said, hmm, I was just talking to my sister. My sister's a faithful Christian. And she said, I don't go to church right now, but I was actually asking her, like, how can I, how can, I still want to tithe. I still want to give. And she said, but I really want to give to an organization that's doing something that's important. Do you have a card? <laughs> of course, I'm like not official at all. I have no card. I have cards now if you want one. They're in the back table, but I didn't then. And I'm like... Okay, so I'm like rooting for a scrap of paper, you know, out of my backpack. And she goes, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to give you my card. I want you to contact me when you get home and send me everything about this ministry. By the way, also, my sister is a retired Spanish professor who lived on St. Thomas for all these years, and she might help you. Okay. Let me tell you what happened. This woman paid the entire way for one of us to go and do a conference in Mexico. And she got me in touch with her sister who translated all of our student notes (laughs) for the students in Mexico. (laughs) Fast forward a couple of months and I I go out to the mailbox. There's There's a letter in the mail from this woman's husband. Okay, the sister's husband. Not the lady on the plane, her sister's husband. I have never spoken, never interacted with him, had no contact with him whatsoever. Two-page handwritten letter. Pastor Mike, when I heard that you were willing to leave your sleeping stuff behind so that you could fit Bibles onto the vehicle, and by the way, you all would have done the same thing, right? You gotta, get, you gotta, you gotta take the Bibles, right? <laughs> I didn't think anything of it. Didn't you remember telling him the story? And he said, when I heard that you left your sleeping stuff behind so that you could, could get the Bibles, I began to weep because I spent decades of my life on St. Thomas Island, paradise, right? And pastors and missionaries would always want to come and they would demand the best hotel rooms, the best rental cars, and they would still want to get paid. The Holy Spirit has told us that we need to be supporters of you. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) I've never met this man. First support check in the mail, and I want to tell you what, they have been absolute prayer warriors for us. And I want to tell you today, a couple things. One, number one, prayer... (laughs) Supporting this stuff, being that sender in prayer is absolutely vital. Just this morning, I was texting all these people, please pray. I'm going to Calvary Baptist in Norwich. Say, would you pray? Would you pray? Would you pray? So you guys have people praying for you this morning. And, 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 and not only that, when we go over, I can tell you every single time I go to training, it is resisted in some way, shape, or form. I almost died the first time I went to Uganda because I got some jungle sickness. So every time I go, I recognize that I cannot go without the senders backing us. Powerful things happen. I mean, this is like, it's like the book of Acts is real. (laughs) Could you imagine? So maybe you're a sender today. Maybe you're somebody who's gonna just commit to prayer. Maybe you're doing it now. Maybe God is urging you to do that. Maybe today, God is urging you to give. I don't know. All I know is that whoever he tells you to give that to, do it. And I'm gonna tell you what, the blessings are profound. Maybe today, and I, and I, I sense that there, this could be very real and very um, true, that maybe today God is stirring in you that something is missing. I 
I want to tell you, whatever your doubts are, whatever your fears are, whatever the red flags are that's waving to you about following that call, God is so much greater. He is so sovereign. If you have a missing piece, I'll bet you, I'll bet you, I know, he's already got the pieces in place. Like Priscilla and Aquila were for Apollos. God, thank you so much today for this incredible church. What a blessing to see so many folks, just more brothers and sisters that, oh God, I get to not only meet now, but but spend forever with. Thank you for them. Lord, I'm asking for your grace to move among us, to help us to be willing to, to follow after you with a whole heart, whatever that missing piece may be. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, that was that was special because you know we we read the Book of Acts, but it's exciting to see it being lived out right here, right now. So thank you very much for sharing. At this time, we're gonna uh, give our morning offering, and what's very special about this time is, like Mike was saying, we've been given so much. We've been given salvation, forgiveness of sins, and this is the time that we have to give back to Jesus for that. So uh, before that time, though, let's uh, say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for your salvation, for your forgiveness of sins. I pray that uh, as we go forth that we would be aware of your presence and your spirit working around us, even in these gifts that we give today. And in Jesus' name, amen. Our last song today celebrates the salvation that we have in Jesus. Would you please stand and join us as we sing? Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, Up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, Since curse has lost its grip on me, For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, 
This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you again, Mike, for sharing with us this morning. Have a great day today.